Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with EarthQuo and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, we are gonna be unboxing this really special package from Supra Candle Supply. And if you guys haven't heard them before, they are a fragrance oil supplier and from what I've heard so far, uh, these oils are gonna be very upscale and they're gonna be a good option if you have more of a luxury marketed candle line, but their price points are more affordable. So really excited about this box. Um, these guys have been in the business for a long time as candle makers, which also translates to, in my opinion, a better quality product because they know things from our side as well. And yeah, if you're new here, my name is Alan. I'm a little bit obsessed with fragrances and proud. Um, but anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So as always with my unboxing videos, I haven't even opened the package. I do all that right on camera with you guys. So that way if something is packed crazily or there's oils all over the place leaking in the box, you guys know firsthand, um, but yeah, so we're gonna unbox these and I have no idea what is in this package. They just reached out to me and asked if they could send me some of their fragrance oils, so I have no idea what they've sent me, which is really exciting and fun because I feel like a five-year-old in a candy shop whenever I get fragrances. You guys all know that. Right. Ooh, I love these bottles. Do you guys see this? They have like gold tops. Ooh, okay, so these are two ounce bottles. Wow, okay. I'm gonna have to, I'm just gonna look at the names on here and then I'll flip you guys around. But I love how these are packaged. So we have Intrigue, uh, Vigor, Sprig. It's very like minimalistic, I would say. And then in here, ooh, Wanderlust. Rebound. Tide. That looks interesting. I love, like, they're just one word names. Uh, and Zen. Whoa, lots of oils, you guys. This is exciting. And then in this one, we have Obsession. Nectar. Mimosa. And then Perk. So they all have like, like different colors on them, but then they're like one word. And then under the single word, they put like the three, what I'm guessing are like the main notes of the fragrance. And of course, there's gonna be more notes than that, but uh, very interesting. In this one, we have Aloha. Dusk, ooh, I'm really excited for Dusk. You guys know, um, these types of evening fragrances are just, they can be some of the most mysterious and sensual. Uh, this next one is called Haven. And then we have Joyride. All right. And just packed with some biodegradable packing peanuts. As I always say, you guys, these are mainly made of cornstarch, so you can literally just dissolve them in water and they will biodegrade before your eyes. Um, they've also put, I'm gonna cover my address here, a packing slip, which is really nice with everything that's in the box. Now, as always with my fragrance videos, you guys know I don't hold anything back. Um, what I think is what you hear. And that is just the purpose of these videos. It's to give my unfiltered, out of the bottle first impressions. There's always the chance with fragrances that something I really like, you might not like. And there's also the chance that something you really like, I might put on my fails list. Uh, fragrances are very subjective. And I always like to put out this disclaimer to new folks watching that you always wanna make sure you do your own testing and make sure to evaluate the fragrance in a final product before having any final impressions. These are just my first impressions out of the bottle. But I'm so excited to smell these oils, you guys. You all know I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. 
Um, what should we start with? I, I just grabbed this one that's called Sprig. I've never seen the gold uh, tops on these bottles before, and I really like that. You all know my whole, like, colors are kind of black and gold behind a lot of my, at least my luxury marketed candles, my Wanderlust collection. Um, okay, so this one says black pepper, rosemary, and bamboo. And they also have a little bit of information on the side. Um, and I love how they have, so their labels are like, um, it's hard to show on the camera, but they're like, um, I've given a lot of companies a hard time because you can actually smear their labels. These, they feel like they have like a gloss coating over them. Um, and I could be wrong about that, but they feel like they won't smear, which I really like. It's always frustrating when you have an oil that you love and then they use like an inkjet or something without any coating over it and it just smears and then uh, you can't tell what the oil is. So anyways, I need another sip of coffee. All right, so black pepper, rosemary, and bamboo. I really don't know what to expect um, from how they market their oils. I am expecting these all to be upscale, uh, kind of hotel-esque spa-like fragrances. Uh, but, oh my gosh, I smell something from like a foot away with this one. Um, okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. This is very complex. So I'm getting, wow. So I'm getting all three notes immediately. Like they're all coming through as like the top note. I'm getting the black pepper. So if you guys have smelled like uh, Cypress and Bayberry from Candle Science, that is a good example of like a black pepper type of a note in a fragrance. And I'm definitely getting that type of a note, but this version of it with the rosemary and the bamboo is making it much more something if you went to like a luxury spa um, that they might have diffusing in the room when you're getting a massage or getting your face like all pampered. Oh my goodness, I really, really, really like this. I haven't smelled anything that um, strikes me as remotely similar to this either. Like I'm getting, if you like those sort of aloe vera, cucumber water type fragrances, I feel like that may be the bamboo um, wow. So, as I always say, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, I will do my best to put the fragrance notes up on the screen for each of these, but I don't consult anything prior to filming these videos because when I read the notes beforehand, it gives me like an idea of what I should be smelling and I like to just be unfiltered. Whatever I smell is what you hear. Um, so I'll have the notes up on the screen for these, but I'm only able to see the three notes that they put on the bottle. And, um, that's how I like to keep these videos. It's just kind of raw and unfiltered. And to me, it makes it more fun. So that is Sprig. And for those of you guys who are new, this platter up here is where I put my creme de la cremes. And that oil I'm very intrigued by. Um, very intrigued. Like if you have a spa collection or even in my Wanderlust collection, I can see that going somewhere. Okay, this next one is called Zen. And the main three notes is gonna be cardamom, saffron, and cedar. Now, saffron is a note that is really hard to do right. Um, Candle Science is black, violet, and saffron, for example. It's a really popular oil. Uh, it's a good example of like a saffron note. But to me personally, that oil they got a little carried away with the black violet. Uh, saffron by itself, it's a very upscale spice note, but it doesn't come across as like um, what you think of when you think of like cinnamon or allspice. It, it's a exotic, um, very niche specific type of a spice note. And so it tends to be found in upscale perfumes a lot of the time. Um, but this one, whoa just splash the oil on my tripod. This one also says it has uh, cedar and cardamom. So, very interesting. I feel like cedar would be a good thing to put with uh, the saffron, but let's see how this goes. Oh, interesting. And I almost whacked myself in the face with this. So this reminds me, wow, this is a, like an expansive type of a fragrance, I would say. Like it has a really wide ozonic note to it. 
but it also gives that almost like upscale fig type of a note like it reminds me if you guys have smelled fig tree by candle science or if you've smelled um figuier by stone candles but with less of the kind of dirt note to it wow that's kind of what this reminds me of and as this dries down on the blotter strip i'm getting more of the notes kind of coming together a lot of times with these oils when you just smell them straight out of the bottle the you're gonna get kind of hit with the top note but when you put them on the strips and let them kind of dry down you get a better balance of all the notes so yeah this is really intriguing to me um definitely smells like a high-end fragrance that you get in like a hotel this would be a good one if you like kind of the ozonic fragrances but you like to dabble in fruity fragrances that are slightly slightly i don't want to say cologne like but like have that kind of aesthetic to it, but then also you like woody fragrances, earthy fragrances. So this is kind of a synthesis of all of those. Wow. Let's take a look at Haven. I love the name of this, and I think that their names pair really well so far with the notes that they put on the bottle. So this one says sage, patchouli, and sweet pine, which like when I think of a haven, when I think of like my home or places that I like that just make me feel at peace, um, I feel like those notes would be singing, like just resounding. And ooh, I'm so excited for this one. Okay, so here goes Haven by Supra. Let's see what it's gonna do for us. Oh, interesting. Oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face. Interesting. Okay, so I'm definitely getting the pine notes to this and I'm definitely getting the sage. Um, I would be very curious to see how this one does in a candle because out of the bottle, I feel like the sort of um, herbaceous notes are coming through a little more prominently than I might like. Uh, but I feel like if this were put into a final product that that might be toned down quite a bit. Um, so out of the bottle, I'm getting a lot of kind of the earthy notes, the sage, I'm getting the pine. Um, the patchouli is kind of in the background that usually manifests more as like a base note. But I'm getting something that almost has like a black licorice type of an aesthetic and that's what I'm not liking out of the bottle. But I am gonna probably put this one into a final product and see how this comes together um, because a lot of times, some of those notes out of the bottle that come off really strong like that um, can get really toned down when they're in a final product and actually be really nice. So that is Haven. Next up, let's take a look at Vigor. This one I'm kind of scared for. I'm usually not into. Uh, the main notes are ginger, guava, and lime. So I feel like for me I usually am very critical of fruity fragrances because I don't like anything that smells remotely like candy um, but this one let's see what it's gonna do oh interesting so I'm definitely getting the guava is the most prominent note to this one I feel like wow is this dries down more um, I'm getting something really breezy and coastal with this one almost. Uh, I'm getting the lime, but very lightly in the background. It just adds kind of a cooling undertone to this. Uh, it's very fruity, but this may have be one of the first fruity, like tropical fruity forward fragrances that doesn't strike me as entirely like candy at all. There's definitely that subtle aesthetic to it to me um, with like the guava that has kind of like a a candy like note to it I would say but it's not like the other notes how they interplay with it it comes off very just smooth and sensual um wow yeah this is like you're laying on the beach and maybe you're at a nude beach um on your beach chairs and you got your friends next to you and maybe you're just walking down the beach as well but this is very much like if you had a fragrance that you might call nude beach or something that's what i get from this but like done tropical like i'm in saint martin or something um 
yeah, on the French side or on one of the little remote islands that they have off of the main St. Martin. Um, or you can take like a little, like a little detour ship and get to another small island and just kind of hang out on the nude beach. Oh my God. This is not for me, but I can see this being really popular if you have, um, if you like kind of sweeter fruity fragrances, but you want something that's more refined and upscale and sensual. So that is Vigor. All right, next up, oh, let's take a look at Joyride. Uh, ooh, okay, this one, I love the name. So it says Honeysuckle, Jasmine, and Sandalwood. So Jasmine is another note that you'll often find in upscale fragrances, and it's a floral, but it's not like your typical heady floral. It's more of like a dusky, sensual, refined floral. And um, Honeysuckle, on the other hand, so, Candle Science is Honeysuckle Jasmine, for example. It's one of my most popular summer fragrances. Um, it's not one of my personal fragrance, <laughs> one of my personal favorites because Honeysuckle tends to be more of like a heady type of a floral and I'm usually not into that. So here goes Joyride. Let's see what this balance of Honeysuckle and Jasmine with the woody sandalwood is gonna do for us. Oh, yeah. Okay, so definitely getting the honeysuckle. I feel like they do a good job with putting the three notes that you're supposed to get, like mainly is what I'm thinking on the bottle. Wow, okay, so the honeysuckle is very prominent, but I am getting a nice, like almost a neroli to this one and definitely jasmine. And the sandalwood's just kind of like adding this expansive woody quality in the base. Wow, yeah, I like this. Like I would probably burn this myself, um, which is really surprising because typically honeysuckle, like that's not, but the way that this is done is so well balanced with the other two notes that the honeysuckle is not so like headache inducing, which I know that sounds funny, but that's usually what I get when I smell honeysuckle. I feel like there's neroli in this. I could be wrong. Next, let's take a look at, ooh, I'm gonna save Dusk for last, that one I'm most excited for. Let's take a look at Aloha. So this one is aimed at like a tropical with the coconut and the shea butter and the almond. Um, those all seem like they'd pair really well together. Again, ooh, I can smell something like a foot of weight with this one and I'm not sure. Um, I'm expecting something maybe kind of like Santal and Coconut by Candle Science, but like a little bit more upscale. So like maybe Santal 33-esque by Stone Candles, the Le Labo type. So let's see what Aloha is gonna do for us. Ooh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm definitely getting the Coconut, but the Almond is a really interesting note to pair with that. Um, wow. Yeah, it's almost like it's a coconut amaretto or something. Um, yeah, so if you like those kind of nude beach vibes, but like a little bit uh, like the mature version, I feel like, but this is like, it's not a dusky vibe. Definitely a nude beach vibe, but also like, it's got like an adult beverage with it. It's like you're sitting on the beach drinking some type of an amaretto. Oh my God. So. This one, I could definitely imagine being in like a wanderlust type of a collection if you have like a destination collection um, and you're looking for something that captures that aesthetic of oh, just sitting on the beach and relaxing and contentedness. Um, this has a really woody, very Santal-esque note to it as well. Like you definitely get like a dry down with this fragrance, kind of like you would with the Santal 33, but then it's sweetened a little bit with this kind of amaretto aesthetic. On the note of adult drinks, let's take a look at Mimosa. So this one, um, I am gonna just tell you guys, I've never smelled a Mimosa fragrance that I like. Um, I've smelled quite a few that I've reviewed on this channel, uh, and to this day, I haven't really been positive about any of them. So I'm just putting that out there that I'm very critical of mimosa fragrances. Why, I don't know. I think it may be like it has the fruity component with kind of like the alcoholic component and it just doesn't usually work for my nose. It comes off as smelling a little bit artificial. 
Um, but let's see how Champagne, Mandarin, and Amber manifests in this Mimosa fragrance by Supra. Ooh, I can smell something like a foot away. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm surprised by this actually. This really smells like a mimosa. Like this does not smell like a wannabe mimosa. This is a full ass mimosa. Oh my God. I don't even drink these, but I've had them before. And I kind of know like what they smell like. And this literally captures like, it has like a, the champagne note, yes, but not an artificial champagne note. It's like a deep champagne type of a vibe that's sparkly. And then you also get that mandarin, like a fresh squeezed mandarin. Um, wow. I'm very surprised. This might be, this is not my favorite fragrance and I would still say that this is not an oil for me, but I'm probably most surprised by this because like I said, I've never smelled a mimosa fragrance that I actually, I'm not gonna say I enjoy this. I'm just gonna say that it smells like a true mimosa and the amber really plays effectively in bringing this like to the next level in terms of being upscale. Um, that's very impressive to me. Like the mandarin is the heart and soul of the fragrance but the sparkly champagne like top note with the amber kind of like it's just like this kind of pervasive like undertone that's warm and embracing all right you guys kind of surprised by this company i'm not gonna lie um because you guys know usually by this time i've reviewed one two three four seven fragrances i would have something that i just say is totally a fail um, but I'm impressed. So this is called, this next one is called Rebound. The main notes is pomegranate, lavender, and eucalyptus. Really love the minimalistic vibe of these. Okay. It's kind of interesting to put pomegranate with the lavender and eucalyptus. Like I haven't seen that combination before, but let's see what this is gonna do. Ooh. Oh, wow. I just whacked myself in the face. Wow, that's a really intriguing interplay. So I'm getting like the eucalyptus very prominently. The lavender is definitely there, but it's in the background. And the pomegranate is very forward. If you've smelled, um, I'm trying to think of the name of the oil. Um, I think it's called Red Current by Stone Candles. Or if you've smelled Stone Candles, um, gosh, I'll put the name up on the screen of the other one that I'm thinking of. Um, that's what this is along the lines of. But it's more done like a spa type of a fragrance because of the eucalyptus and lavender. Like this smells like something that you might have going in like an invigorating massage type of a room. Um, like something diffusing, but it's like invigorating at the same time. And wow, I'm, this might be one of my more favorites from this video. Um, just because I love interesting interplays on herbals. I started off with essential oils in my own business and my whole idea behind a lot of our fragrance blends at Earth Glow is to take different aesthetics of essential oils and give them an artistic representation. So I almost always use fragrances that have essential oils in them. And the eucalyptus and lavender paired with the pomegranate like that. Pomegranate is something that you wouldn't get like in an essential oil, but eucalyptus and lavender definitely are. And so those aesthetics paired with the pomegranate is just a combination that I've never seen or done myself and uh, I think it works very effectively. Next, let's take a look at Intrigue. Ooh, I'm kind of scared for this. <laughs> I don't know that I'm gonna like this one. Star Anise, Fennel, and Vanilla. Um, I, so Star Anise is one of those that, it can be very overdone very easily. And it's a spice, 
right? So if you guys have seen when you're cooking, they literally look like stars. You often will find them in chai fragrances or in kind of um, oriental fragrances. But um, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna go with the fennel. Fennel is another one that when it's done right, it works, but again, it's very easy to overdo. And vanilla is just a safe base. So let's see what intrigue does for us. I'm kind of expecting something um, sensual and something exotic from this. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Oh. This is a little lighter than I would expect out of the bottle, I will say. But what I'm smelling is a really beautiful warm, exotic, spicy synthesis of all three of those notes. And the way that they've done the star anise in this fragrance is just right. I am also getting some cinnamon, which is not very heavy, but it just adds like to the warmth. I don't know if it's in there, but um, wow. This has to be uh, one of my favorite spice fragrances that I've ever smelled. Um, so one of my favorites, is um, if you guys have smelled, well, it's not really a spice fragrance, but Patchouli Sandalwood by Stone Candles. It's actually what I use in our Wanderlust collection as our Kathmandu candle. That is my favorite candle that I make, period. Um, this reminds me along the lines of that type of a scent, like a really deep, woody, sweet um, scent, but then you bring in like a hint of spice to it. Uh, my only critique of this is I wish it were stronger out of the bottle. It is coming through pretty strong, but usually with something like this, it would be hitting me even more out of the bottle. All right, we got to break this streak here. Let's take a look at Nectar. Nectar um, is one that I feel like I could be pretty critical. This is honey, passion fruit, and toffee. Kind of an interesting combination. Um, I will say that these bottles... Uh, some of them, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there's a little bit of, let me try to put this in focus, a little bit of fragrance oil that's getting on the sides of their bottles. Um, and maybe they can prevent that by just like putting some electrical tape on the caps. I know that's not really a bougie aesthetic, but um, that is something that I have noticed. It's not interfering with the fragrance bottles themselves, their labels are really good. Like they're not smearing at all, but I have noticed that. So anyways, this is Nectar with notes of honey, passion fruit, and toffee. Oh, oh my goodness. This is definitely like a gourmand fragrance. Um, wow, okay. As this dries down, it is a little bit lighter than I might expect. Um but I really like what I'm getting. Um, again, kind of an amaretto, like if you like those kind of oats and honey and almond amaretto combined with sort of a fruity aesthetic, which really works well. Um, this fragrance, I wish it were coming through. I wish I was getting more of what I'm getting. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Tide. I'm excited for this one. Um, sea salt, orchid, and driftwood. Uh, these tend to be some of my more favorite types of fragrances, the beachy, kind of oceany, ozonic, but combined with something a little bit floral maybe. Um, these tend to be really good spa collection type fragrances, so, and I love the name, so let's see what this is gonna do. Oh, just whack myself in the face with a strip. Okay, this is not what I expected. Um, it's woody, yes. Like I'm getting like the driftwood for sure. Uh, I pick up a little bit of sea salt and I do pick up something ozonic, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed by this one. Uh, it's coming through as like an expansive sort of driftwood kind of coastal vibe, yes but it's a little generic for me. Like this company has put their stake pretty high, I would say. And it's also lighter than I would like out of the bottle. Um, it's not bad. Like I, I would imagine that this could be really nice, like in a room, just kind of giving a subtle undertone, especially if you are trying to evoke a coastal feel. 
Um, it's actually, as the more it dries down, I'm getting more of like the woody notes, but in a refined way. Um, it's a bit nondescript compared to some of their other oils though, I will say. All right, next up, let's take a look at Obsession. Um, raspberry, gardenia, and pink sugar. So definitely not my type of fragrance, personally. But I'm gonna try to evaluate it for what it is and um, see how well it comes through. I feel, I always feel like I'm on the Food Network when I do some of these and you can't possibly like every type of dish or every type of note, but you just have to kind of evaluate them for what they are and what they're supposed to be and how well all the artistry comes together. So this is Obsession by Supra. Well, I am definitely getting a sort of pink sugar uh, beverage aesthetic to this. The um, raspberry definitely comes through, but in a almost candied, I don't know, alcoholic champagne-like way, uh, in a mature way, I would say. Like if you like pink sugar type fragrances, I would say that you definitely wanna check this out. This is probably my favorite pink sugar-like fragrance that I have smelled. It's definitely not for me, but uh, I don't get the gardenia either. So I'm getting a synthesis of like champagne, pink sugar, and raspberry. And <laughs> this reminds me of a Bath & Body Works hand sanitizer that I have that um, I actually kind of like it as a hand sanitizer. So I feel like this would make a good hand sanitizer or a good lotion if you like those types of vibes. Um, yeah. I'm not disappointed at all. Like this is more than I would expect for those notes. And a lot of people are really into these types of fragrances. They're just not my cup of tea. Got three oils left here. Ooh, this next one is called Perk um, with notes of cho <laughs> chocolate, coffee beans, and toffee. Now. You guys know, if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, how I am with chocolate fragrances. I feel like I'm just super mean and critical of a bunch of stuff. <laughs> like, am I really that bad, you guys? I don't know. But, um, ooh, I'm smelling something from like a foot away though with this one. Not sure about it. Um, but yeah, I often think chocolate fragrances smell like, I'm not gonna say it on this video, but very critical, so. Let's see what Perk is gonna do. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. So this is a true chocolate. I don't know if I've ever said that before. Yeah, I'm getting all three of those notes. The coffee beans work really well with the chocolate and the toffee just adds like an undertone of like <sighs> bougie coffee shop kind of vibes, but also it's a bakery fragrance for sure. This may be like the most bakery-like fragrance of any of these. So if you're looking for like a coffee shop, chocolate shop type of a fragrance um, that leans more upscale, Perk by Supra, this is it. Uh, this is very prominent out of the bottle as well. Yeah, the more this dries down, it just smells spot on, like you're walking into a fancy chocolate place. And I'm impressed. I feel like the toffee is a really good base to have. I also get like some creamy vanilla in this one. So we're down to the very last two oils. Uh, we have Dusk, ooh, and I'm super excited for Dusk, and Wanderlust. Let's start with Wanderlust. So, you guys know my luxury collection is called the Wanderlust Collection. It's, it's inspired by various cities and regions throughout the world. And um, so, oh my God, and I smell something like a foot away with this one. But I, so one of the main things for me with fragrance is I love anything that's gonna take me somewhere. And that is the aesthetic behind Wanderlust. So let's see what this Beauty Berry Lemon and Jasmine fragrance by Supra. Um, is gonna do. This is their Wanderlust. Ooh, wow. Okay, so I'm, this is light out of the bottle for them. Um, 
definitely on the lighter side, but I'm loving the lemon and jasmine combined with this sort of luxury berry, like cassis, black currant uh, type of a note. The lemon works really well because that is kind of like the main, the top note to this for sure. But then, oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face. It gives that kind of Mediterranean um, aesthetic for sure. If you're looking for something that's gonna be kind of coastal, but also woodsy, earthy, like a beautiful synthesis of all of those things, Wanderlust by Supra. Um, I'm really intrigued. Yeah, the more this dries down, I'm getting like a woody dry down type of a aesthetic that reminds me of like a Santal 33, but then combined with something that's like that hotel spa like quality with the fruity, oftentimes hotels will do like black currant, uh, cassis like fragrances, fig like fragrances are all very popular in like having a wide upscale appeal in the hotel industry. And that's what I'm getting from this. Uh, really captivating and I can't wait to try Wanderlust in a final product. Last but not least, and the one that I'm most excited for is Dusk. Now, I am gonna tell you guys that I absolutely love fragrances generally that have pink pepper and plum and amber. All three of those notes work really well together and they just tend to create, in my opinion, some of the most dramatic and exotic um, just upscale fragrances. So don't let me down on this very last one, Supra, but here goes Dusk. Let's see what it's gonna do for us. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, and wow. Yeah, this is a fragrance that you could wear for sure. I'd say most all of these are wearable though, but this one, there's like a black violet note to this or something that's really <sighs> exotic and like taking me into a nighttime woods or something, but like an enchanted woods. Ah, uh, this would be like an enchanted twilight type of a fragrance. Definitely along the lines of your into the night twilight woods that I love so much. But this one is, it's like, um, it has a little bit of vigor to it and excitement to it. Yeah, it's like a passion, evening, but passionate type of a vibe. And I'm definitely getting the black plum and the amber. I would say the pink pepper's pretty prominent as well. The whole fragrance, I wish it were just a notch stronger out of the bottle, but it is coming through pretty strong. Um, I'm just, like I said, being a little more critical because the stakes are pretty high with all of these oils uh, in general with this company. So I wish this one were a little stronger out of the bottle, but wow. All right, you guys. So what I think I'm gonna do um, is you guys let me know in the comments if you are interested in this. But what I'm thinking of, since they did give me two ounce bottles, is I'm thinking of making some wax melts with these fragrances and having them all available um, as long as my testers go well, obviously. I'm gonna make sure that they throw the way I want, etc. But I'm thinking of having them all available on my website, um, like under, I was thinking of making like a limited edition, but not like my limited edition, like a carrier pigeon, <laughs> maybe call the collection, the carrier pigeon collection, and have that be, when companies send me the two ounce bottles, I'm able to make um, like seven or eight wax melts. And what I would do is just name the wax melt, whatever the name of the fragrance is on the bottle, just to keep things really simple for you guys. And then I would put in the description of the scent, the company that I purchased it from as well. So that way you guys are able to see if you wanna try out the, pro the oil in a final product by someone who's been doing this for years and years so that you're able to know how this could perform for you, um, then I just thought that might be a fun idea. So yeah, maybe we'll call it the Carrier Pigeon Collection. And again, it'll just be small amounts. Like I said, I'm about to, I'm able to get about seven or eight wax melts out of a two ounce uh, fragrance bottle. And I use 12% generally in my wax melts. Um, and that formula for my melts, uh, I will have available to my patrons as well. Um, it actually is already in my Patreon so that you guys are able to see. I blend 6006 and 4625 and the scent throw is out of this world in general, but um, 
if the fragrance isn't, you know, high quality, it's not going to throw. So there's that as well. Um, it doesn't work well with everything, but you guys let me know if that's something that you'd like to see in the future. Um, but anyways, yeah, thank you so much to Supra for sending me these fragrances. I will have their company linked in the description box of this video. This is in no way sponsored or affiliated with Supra, but they did reach out and offer to send me the oils to give my honest and unfiltered, as I always do, review for you guys. But anyways, if you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Sending all of you peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making. I would like to take the time to thank my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out goes to Wendy, Nicole Rott, Nancy with All About Me Beauty Bar, Merle, Brad with Neon City Scents, Michelle, Paula, Zahara with Crystalline Candle Co., Julie with Belux Candle Co., Jennifer with Bea Essentials, Selena with Banbury Street Creations, Andrea, Sue, Nick, Bruce, Emma, Flavia, Jennifer with Bittersweet Candle Co., Danielle, Anitra with Ninth and Maxwell, Matthew, Jindy, Lisa, Elizabeth, Tammy, Carol, Cheryl with Soaps by Cheryl, Maya, Losa, Betty, Luzdari, Taichi, John with Past Sense Candles, Angela, Amber, Bluegrass Bath and Candle Co., Marquita, Allie, Carla, Todd with Cold Creek Candle Co., Krista, SS, Karen with River Birch Soaps, Kina with Kijoli, Angela, Amanda, Denise with Grumblegeist Candle Co., She's More, Cindy, Kim, Teresa, Frida, Sharomi, J Creative P, Colette, Nicole, Stella, Leanne, Martha, Angela, Jamie, Chadwick, Z, Mabel, Arev, Bobby, Jamie, Brian, Amy, Julia, Stephanie, Honey, Janet, Terry, Maria, Carla, Lo, Genevieve, Gracie, Yolanda, Tonya, Susan, Irene, Rolanda with Mason Marzette, Megan, Melissa, Ursulette with Ursulette's Beauty Secrets, Danny with Halos, Kelly, TCM with Ava Bryceco, Lois, Terry with Maddie Rose Market, Tia, Victoria with The Sacred Prayer, Valerie, Stacy with Firewick with Me, Jenna with Sebastopol Botanicals, Belinda, Rhonda, Smadar, Duchess Luxury Creations, Juliet, Carla, Crystal with Indigo Scents Candle Co., Anika, Kim with Kimberly's Candle Co., Kim, Angelic, Tia, Chris, Jason, Sharon, Miss S, Shakira, Tiffany, Kim, BN, Lizette, Chandra, Pat, Chickadee Company, Tara, Heather, Indigo, Shijana with Forever Mellow Co., Gina, Emily, Sandra with Loft 54, Heidi, Brianna, Sunday, Michelle, Lisa, Angela with Woodland Apothecary, Kelly Vons, Angela, Natalie with Walters Wicks, Anne, Sherry, Cynthia, Denise, Sonia, Natasha, Elisa, and Shambliss Candles and Soaps. Your support is deeply appreciated.